ITF, ustanova za krepitev človekove varnosti, je humanitarna, neprofitna organizacija, ki jo je marca 1998 ustanovila Vlada Republike Slovenije in letos obeležuje 25. obletnico ustanovitve. Njen prvotni namen je bil nuditi pomoč Bosni in Hercegovini pri implementaciji mirovnega sporazuma ter podporo pri pokonfliktni rekonstrukciji. ITF je od samega začetka nenehno razvijal in utrjeval svoje poslanstvo, krepitve varnosti ter omogočanja obnove in razvoja držav, ki so jih prizadejali obroženi spopadi. Pri tem ITF naslavlja tako neposredne kot dolgoročne posledice, ki jih povzročajo mine, eksplozivni ostanki vojne in druge nevarnosti, ki ostajajo po končanem obroženem konfliktu. Svoj geografski doseg in obseg aktivnosti je ITF razširil z namenom naslavljene težav spremenjajočega se okolja človekove varnosti, potreb držav prejemnic in prioritet donatorske skupnosti. Vizija ITF je svet brez grožen miru in varnosti, kjer sta blaginja in dostojanstvo posamezniku ter skupnosti zagotovljena. In to je gotovo vizija vseh nas. The ITF, Institution for Enhancing Human Security, is a humanitarian non-profit organization founded in March 1998 by the government of the Republic of Slovenia, and this year it is celebrating 25 years of existence. The initial purpose of the organization was to help Bosnia and Herzegovina at the implementation of the peace agreement and support the reconstruction after the conflict. Since its very beginning, the ITF was constantly developing and fostering its mission to enhance human security and to facilitate the renovation and development of countries which were affected by armed conflict. With this, the ITF is tackling the direct as well as the indirect consequences caused by mines, explosive remnants of war and other hazards who remain in areas stricken by armed conflicts. The ITF has broadened its geographic scope and range of activities with the aim of addressing problems of a changing human environment within security matters, of changeable needs of beneficiary countries and of the donor community. The vision of the ITF is a world with no threats to peace and security, where the well-being and dignity of individuals and communities are safeguarded. And surely we all can agree upon such a vision. Ob tej priložnosti k nagovoru v ljudno vabim predsednico Republike Slovenije, doktorico Natašo Pirc-Musar. I would now kindly ask the President of the Republic of Slovenije, doktor Natašo Pirc-Musar, for her address. Spoštovane dame in gospodje, in lep dober dan, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to warmly welcome you here in the Presidential Palace. Spoštovani, novo imenovani predsednik Svetovalnega odbora ITF, veleposlanik Ham. Spoštovani, odhajajoči predsednik Svetovalnega odbora ITF, veleposlanik Ariste Guj. Excelence, veleposlanice in veleposlaniki držav članic Svetovalnega odbora, spoštovani predsednik in člani upravnega odbora ITF, spoštovani direktor ITF in sodelavke ter sodelavci, dame in gospodje. Dear newly appointed chairman of the ITF Board of Advisors, Ambassador Ham, dear outgoing chairman of the ITF Board of Advisors, Ambassador Artesegui, excellences, ambassadors of the member states of the Board of Advisors, distinguished chairperson and members of the ITF Managing Board, distinguished director of the ITF and his colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. V veliko veselje mi je, da vas lahko pozdravim ob počastitvi 25-letnice delovanja ITF prav danes na Mednarodni dan o zaveščanja o minah in pomoči pri protiminskem delovanju. Vaša prisotnost je potrditev visoke stopne soglasja držav, ki jih zastopate v Sloveniji, o pomenu humanitarnega delovanja kot ene osrednjih tem zunanje politike. Še enkrat dobrodošli v predsedniški palači v Ljubljani. It is a great pleasure to welcome you to the 25th anniversary of the ITF today on the International Day for Mine Awareness and Mine Action Assistance. Your presence is a confirmation of the high level of consensus 
among the countries you represent here in Slovenia on the importance of humanitarian activities as one of the central topics of foreign policy. Welcome once again to the Presidential Palace here in Ljubljana. Danes vas kot prva predsednica Republike nagovarjam v času velike krize v mednarodnem prostoru. Pred našimi očmi se vrstijo nepredstavljive kršitve človekovih pravic. Odrasli in otroci, še posebno v Ukrajini, so žrtve napadov za vsem možnim orožjem. Cele skupnosti in države so se znašle v grozovitem pomankanju. Pomen posameznikov, Evropa njih najosnovnejšega človekovega dostojanstva, še posebej žensk, ustrajno drsi po spolskem pobočju, ki mu ni videti konca. V nekaterih državah ženske ne morejo same odločati ali se bodo izobraževale, ne morejo javno izreči svojega mnenja ali pa jim je zanikan dostop do osnovne zdravstvene oskrbe. Prav tako jim je oduzeto odločanje o lastnem telesu. As the first female president of the Republic of Slovenia, I am addressing you at a time of great crisis on an international level. Unimaginable human rights violations are taking place before our eyes. Adults and children, especially in Ukraine, have become victims of attacks with all kinds of weapons. Entire communities and countries are in dire need. The meaning of individuals deprived of the most basic human dignity, especially women, is steadily declining, and we could claim that they are also steadily losing their grounds. In some countries, women are not able to decide for themselves whether or not to pursue an education. They are not able to express their opinions publicly or are denied access to basic health care. They are also denied the right to decide about their own bodies. Ženske, otroci in moški, kot žrtve eksplozivnih ostankov vojne, ne morejo živeti polnega življenja. Prikrajšani so za najosnovnejša vsakodnevna opravila, kot je prosto gibanje okoli svojih hiš, okoli svojih šol, po svojem mestu. Živijo v negotovosti ali bodo deležni v strezne zdravstvene oskrbe. Ogromne množice ljudi, družin, kot je vaša in moja, so se znašle brez osnovne človekove varnosti, brez osnovnega upanja na življenje v miru, brez možnosti za življenje v medsebojnem spoštovanju, dostojanstvu in sodelovanju. Women, children and men as victims of explosive remnants of war are unable to live full lives, deprived of the most basic daily tasks such as moving freely around their houses, around their schools, around their town. They live in uncertainty as to whether they will receive adequate medical care. Huge masses of people, families like yours or mine, find themselves without basic human security, without the basic hope of a life in peace, without the possibility of a life of mutual respect, dignity and cooperation. Zato je vaše delo tako zelo pomembno. Izjemnega pomena je, da z velikodušnimi prispevki pomagate pri čiščenju in uničevanju eksplozivnih ostankov vojne, da pomagate pri zdravstveni oskrbi žrtev konfliktov in njihovem izobraževanju za nove poklice, da krepite zmogljivosti držav, ki so se znašle v praktičnem kolapsu, da pomagate vsem žrtvam povrniti tisto osnovno, kar nas dela ljudi, človeško dostojanstvo. Therefore, your work is of such a high importance. It is of the utmost importance that you, with your generous contributions, help to clean up and destroy the explosive remnants of war, that you help to provide medical care to victims of conflict and to train them for new professions, that you build the capacities of countries who have virtually collapsed, and that you help all victims to regain the basics that makes us human, namely human dignity. Ob tem še s posebej velikim veseljem sprejemam idejo, da kot primeren poklic za žrtve eksplozivnih ostankov vojne promovirate čebelarstvo in zan seveda tudi izobražujete. Gre namreč za dediščino, na katero smo v Sloveniji upravičeno zelo ponosni in smo z njo preko Združenih narodov prodrli tudi v svet. ITF pa to pot skupaj strokovnjaki Slovenske čebelarske akademije uspešno nadaljuje tudi v državah, kjer smo žal priča vojnim konfliktom. 
Within this scope, I am particularly pleased that you are promoting beekeeping as a suitable profession for the victims of explosive remnants of war, and that you are also providing training in beekeeping. This is a heritage of which we are in Slovenia rightly very proud of, and with which we have made a global imprint through the United Nations. The IGF, together with its expert of the Slovenian Beekeeping Academy, is successfully continuing this path in countries where we are unfortunately witnessing war conflicts. In Slovenia, we know how the war is and is connected to the destruction. At the end of the war in Bosnia and Herzegovina, we established the ITF with the purpose to help our friends in that country to clean the mines and help the victims of all the victims. From the first steps of the year of 1998, to today, the ITF has developed in one of the most international and most recognized Slovenian institutions. In Slovenia, we know that war and the devastation with which goes with it, what it means. Immediately after the end of the war in Bosnia and Herzegovina, we set up the ITF with the mission to help our friends in that country to clear it of landmines and to help all the victims. From its first steps way back in 1998 to the present day, ITF has developed into one of the most internationally recognized Slovenian institutions. S humanitarnimi programmi v Kirgizistanu, Kazahstanu, Afganistanu, Iraku, Siriji, Jordaniji, Izraelu in Palestini, Gruziji, Armeniji, Azerbajdžanu, Libanonu, Libiji, po vseh državah Zahodnega Balkana ter seveda v Ukrajini in Moldaviji je ITF tisti svetilnik slovenske zunanje politike, s katerim skušamo pripeljati elemente miru in pomiritve tja, kjer sta tišino preglasila orožje in eksplozije, s katero skušamo zagotoviti ustrezno oskrbo za ljudi, s katerim skušamo vrniti žrtvam konfliktov po svetu vsaj malo človekove varnosti, vsaj malo človekovega dostojanstva. Nekaj utrinkov njihovega dela je razvidnih tudi s fotografij, ki so danes razstavljene tu v predsedniški palači. Hvala vam tudi za to in vse vabim seveda, da si te fotografije kasneje skupaj ogledamo. With humanitarian programs in Kyrgyzstan, Kazahstan, Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Jordan, Israel, Palestine, Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Lebanon, Libya, in all over the countries of the Western Balkans, of course, in the Ukraine and in Moldova. The ITF is a um, beacon of Slovenian foreign policy, trying to bring elements of peace and reconciliation, where silence has been drowned out by weapons and explosions. By it, we try to ensure that the people and also the victims of conflicts around the world are adequately cared for. And also, we try to restore at least some human security, some human dignity. Also, some of the highlights of ITF's work are displayed here in the photographs today, in, uh, and I would like to thank you and invite you also to come and see them together later. Ponosna sem, da je ITF v partnerstvu z vami, vele poslanice in vele poslaniki, držav donatork, uspelo izvesti toliko zelo pomembnih humanitarnih projektov. Pri tem bi rada izrekla besede posebne hvaležnosti najpomembnejšim donatorjem ITF-a v zadnjih letih. Slovenija seveda, Združenim državam Amerike, Evropski komisiji, Nemčiji, Avstriji, Republiki Koreji, Japonski, Češki, Srbiji, Srednje Evropski pobudi, v prejšnjih letih pa tudi Turčiji, Španiji, Mađarski, OPEC-u, Luksemburgu, Švici, Kanadi, Norveški in ostalim, tudi vrsti seveda zasebnih donatorjev. I dare say I am proud of the ITF in partnership with you, the ambassadors of the donor countries, and it has been able to carry out so many very important humanitarian pro projects. I would like to ex express my deepest gratitude to the most important donors of ITF in recent years. Of course, Slovenia, the United States of America, the, the European Commission, Germany, Austria, the Republic of Korea, Japan, the Czech Republic, Serbia, the Central European Initiative, and in previous years, also Turkey, Spain, Hungary, OPEC, Luxembourg, Switzerland, Canada, Norway, and also others, including a number of private donors. 
Iz srca se vam zahvaljujem za velikodušnost, dolgoročno finančno in politično podporo, brez katerih ITF ne bi bil tako uspešen kot je. Hvala za vašo odločenost, da pomagate tudi tam, kjer so razmere pogosto zelo nevarne, včasih celo brezupne. Upam, da se bo donatorska skupnost držav prihodne še krepila in da se ji bodo pridružile še nove države. Allow me to express my deepest gratitude for your generosity, for your long-term financial and political support, without which the ITF would not be the success it is. Thank you for your determination to help even where the situation is often very dangerous, sometimes even hopeless. I hope that the donor community of countries will continue to grow in the future and that new countries will join it. Zato bi želela današnji dan, Mednarodni dan ozaveščanja o minah in pomoči pri protiminskem delovanju ter svečano 125-letnici ITF izkoristiti za moj ponovni poziv k nadaljevanju in poglobitvi humanitarnega delovanja. Rada bi vas prosila, da kot mednarodna skupnost, ki temeli na načelu univerzalnosti človekovih pravic, svojo plemenito dejavnostjo nadaljujete in pomagate žrtvam konfliktov še posebej otrokom in ženskam. That is why I would like to use this today, the International Day for Mine Awareness and Mine Action Assistance and also the festivities around the 25th anniversary of the ITF as an opportunity to renew my call for continued and deepened humanitarian action. I would like to ask you, as an international community founded on the principle of the University Universality of Human Rights, to continue your noble work to help the victims of conflict, especially children and women. Da še naprej pomagate utrjevati univerzalni okvir vrednot človekovih pravic in človekovega dostojanstva, ki je osredna tema naše zunanje politike in ima tudi mojo aktivno podporo. Da intenzivno delate na udajanjanju mednarodnega sistema, ki bo brez izjem in brez izgovorov vsem zagotavljal osnovne pravice, kot so pravica do miru, zaščite pred vojnimi grozotami, zaščite pred eksplozivnimi ostanki vojne, in seveda ponovno povdarjam osnovnega človekovega dostojanstva in človekove varnosti. And I would like to express again that you help consolidate the universal framework of values of human rights and human dignity, which is at the heart of our foreign policy and which has my active support. Also to work intensively to put into practice an international system that guarantees without exception and without excuse basic rights for all, such as the right for peace, protection from the horrors of war, protection from the explosive remnants of war, and especially basic human dignity and human security. Naj končam z besedami palestinske učiteljice Šadje, ene od udeleženk nedavnega ITF-ovega humanitarnega programa, ki živi na zahodnem bregu v Palestini. V tem konkretnem primeru sta bili donatorki humanitarnega programa Slovenija in Republika Koreja, lahko pa bi bil kdorkoli od vas. Namen programa je bil usposobiti palestinske učiteljice na zahodnem bregu za nudanje programov duševnega zdravja otrokom, žrtvam eksplozivnih ostankov vojne. Kot del delavnic so učiteljice morale napisati pismo punčki mini, ki bi morala biti tu nekje med nami, z uspodbudnim sporočilom žrtvam konflikta. Allow me now to conclude my words with the words of Palestinian teacher Shadia, one of the participants at a recent ITF humanitarian program who lives in the West Bank in Palestine. In this particular case, the donors of the humanitarian program were Slovenia and the Republic of Korea, but it could be any of you countries. The aim of the program was to train Palestinian teachers in the West Bank to provide mental health programs for children victims of explosive remnants of war. And as part of the workshops, the teachers had to write a letter to Mini, a doll which should be here around. And also this doll includes a message. Shadia je na listek napisala tole v punčkaj tamle v predzadnji vrsti. Se lahko obrnete in jo vidite v rokah ene od naših gosti. Hvala lepa. Šadja je torej na listek napisala tole. Moja draga punčka, bodi močna, pridi ven iz svojega mehurčka bolečine, izrazi se svobodno, ker življenje je lepo. 
Naj bodo naši boleči spomini del preteklosti. Začnimo novo življenje, polno upanja, ljubezni in miru. Prihodnost je polna želja in ciljev, imejmo vero v naše zmožnosti, da jih dosežemo. Osvobodimo se vseh omejitev, objemimo življenje z ljubeznjo in začutimo lepoto tega, kar nas obdaja, tudi če je preprosto. Naj bo naše novo vodilo, življenje je lepo, če zaupamo sami vase. So, as you have seen, the doll is here in the row, just in the back with our guests, and Shadia wrote the following message. My dear little girl, be strong. Come out of your bubble of pain. Express yourself freely, because life is beautiful. Let our painful memories be part of the past. Let us begin a new life full of hope, love, and peace. The future is full of aspirations and goals. Let us have faith in our ability to achieve them. Let us free ourselves from all limitations, embrace life with love, and feel the beauty of what surrounds us, even if it is simple. Let our new principle be, life is beautiful if we trust in ourselves. No, in s temi besedami učiteljice Šadje bi rada ITF vter vsem nekdanim in sedanim sodelovkam in sodelovcem Ob tej priložnosti izrekla priznanje za opravljeno delo v prvih 25 letih delovanja. Želim vam uspešno, varno in učinkovito pomoč žrtvam konfliktov tudi v prihodnje. Hvala lepa vsem iz srca. With these words from teacher Shadia, I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the work of the ITF and all its past and present colleagues during this first 25 years of operation. I wish you continued success, a safe and effective assistance to victims of conflict in the future. Thank you dearly. Hvala, gospa predsednica. Vele poslanik Republike Koreje, gospod Ham Sanuk, ljudno vabljeni k besedi. Thank you, dear Mrs. Madam President. Now I'd like to pass the floor to the Ambassador of the Republic of Korea, His Excellency Ham Sanuk. Your Excellency, Natasha Piritz Musar, President of the Republic of Slovenia, Ambassador Thomas Lovrentici, ITF Director, Excellencies and Distinguished Colleagues. Vaša Excelenca, Natasha Pitzmusa, Predsednica Republike Slovenije, Veleposlanik Tomas Lovrentic, Direktor ITF, Spoštovani kolegi, gospe in gospodje. It is a great privilege to address you on this auspicious occasion, marking the 25th anniversary of the ITF. I would like to thank the government of Slovenia and the ITF for inviting me and the board of the advisors to this formal reception. Veliko čas mi je, da vas lahko nagovorim ob tej svečani priložnosti 25. obletnice delovanja ITF-a. Dovolite, da se tudi zahvalim vladi Republike Slovenije in ITF-u, da sta mene in svetovalni odbor povabila na ta uradni sprejem. As the chair of the board, I believe that all of us have had a fruitful discussion this morning taking note of the 2022 annual report and the 2023 portfolio projects. I am confident that the ITF will continue to strengthen its humanitarian activities this year. Kot predsedujoči Svetovalnega odbora menim, da je razprava, ki je potekala danes zjutraj, bila zelo plodna. Seznanili smo se z letnim poročilom za leto 2022 in portfeljem projektov za leto 2023. Prepričan sem, da bo ustanova ITF v tem letu še naprej krepila svoje humanitarne dejavnosti. Unlike many in the room today, I am a relative newcomer to the Republic of Slovenia and the ITF. I presented my credentials to the President Piers Muchar in this palace not even two months ago, and less than two hours ago, I had the honor to assume the chairmanship of the ITF Board of Advisors. Za razliko od mnogih danes tukaj v dvorani sem v Republiki Sloveniji in tudi pri ITF predsejšen novinec. 
Pred dvema mesecema sem pravo te palači predsednici Pirc Musarjevi izročil poverilna pisma, pred manj kot dvema urama pa sem imel čas prevziti predsedovanje svetovalnega odbora ITF-a. The Republic of Korea, however, has been a steadfast contributor to the ITF's humanitarian mission almost since its founding. Having witnessed firsthand the devastating effects of war, Korea is mindful that post-conflict rehabilitation can be accelerated by international cooperation. Reflecting the importance we attach to this work, Korea has doubled its annual contribution to the ITF, now amounting to 390,000 US dollars for a total of 2.2 million US dollars of the lifetime of our partnership so far. Vendar je pa na drugi strani Koreja že skoraj od ustanovitve ITF-a ustrajno prispevala k njenemu humanitarnemu poslanstvu. Ker je bila tudi Koreja sama priča o ničujočim posledicam vojne, se seveda zaveda, da je mogoče z mednarodnim sodelovanjem pospešiti sanacijo po konfliktu. Ker tudi Koreja pripisuje temu velik pomen, je podvojila svoj letni prispevek za ITF, ki se da iznaša 390 tisoč ameriških dolarjev, kar je skupaj 2,2 milijona ameriških dolarjev v času trajanja do sedanjega partnerstva. It is an unfortunate reality that the threat of landmines and the explosive remnants of a war long outlast the cessation of hostilities. The ITF is a necessary response to this intractable challenge. For a quarter of a century now, the ITF has been a strong and capable partner efficiently using donations to make a tangible difference in communities across Europe, South Caucasus, Central Asia, the Middle East and Africa, as we may appreciate through the photos exhibited around us. Žalostna nestičnost je, da nevarnost proti pehotnih min in eksplozivnih ostankov vojne traje še dolgo po prenehanju sovražnosti. In ITF je nujen odziv na ta nerešljivo okoliščine. Že četrstoletja je ITF močan in sposoben partner, ki učinkovito uporablja donacije za doseganje oprijemljivih sprememb v skupnostih po celi Evropi, Južnem Kavkazu, Srednji Aziji, na Bližnjem vzhodu in v Afriki, kot tudi lahko vidimo na razstavljenih fotografijah okoli nas. The achievements of the ITF is a testament to its mission and the dedication of its leadership, staff and donor community. I'd like to express particular appreciation to the Slovenian government for its establishment of and enduring support for the ITF. Given its outstanding record, I look forward to the ITF continuing its life-saving work for a mindful world in the decades to come. Dosežki ITF-a so dokaz njenega poslanstva te predanosti njenega vodstva osebe in donatorske skupnosti. Posebno zahvalo bi tudi rad izrazi v slovenski vladi za ustanovitev in trajno podporo ustanovi ITF. Glede na njene izjemne dosežke se tudi veselim, da bo ustanova v prihodnjih desetiletjih nadaljevala svoje delo za reševanje življen v svetu, v svetu brez min. Humanitarian mine action is just one area where Korea is strengthening cooperation with Slovenia in multilateral fora to address various global challenges, including armed conflict, climate change, and the lack of safe water and food. Humanitarno protiminsko delovanje je le eno od področji, na katerem Koreja krepi sodelovanje Slovenijo v večstranskih forumih za reševanje različnih svetovnih izzivov, vključno z oboroženimi spopadi, podnebnimi spremembami in pomankanjem varne vode in hrane. Last year marked the 30th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between the Republic of Korea and the Republic of Slovenia. 30 years of friendship between the Republic of Korea and the Republic of Slovenia overlap 25 years of cooperation in support of the ITF. For the peoples of both countries, the ITF stands as symbol of our strong bilateral relations and joint endeavors to make a positive difference in the world. Lani je prav tako minilo 30 let od spostavitve diplomatskih odnosov med Republiko Korejo in Republiko Slovenijo. 30 let prijateljstva med Republiko Korejo in Republiko Slovenijo, tudi pravzaprav lahko večemo presega že 25 let sodelovanja, tudi v podporo ITF. Za oboje državljane je ITF simbol naših trdnih dvostranskih odnosov in skupnih prizadevanj za pozitivne spremembe v svetu. 
I look forward to building on this strong partnership to increase the ITF's impact around the world for the next 25 years and beyond. Thank you very much. Veselim se, da bomo na podlagi tega trdnega partnerstva v naslednjih 25 letih in še naprej povečali vpriv ETF-a po celem svetu. Najlepša hvala. Hvala, gospod veleposlanik. Besedi vabim direktorja ETF-a, magistra Tomaža Lovrenčiča. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. I would like to pass the floor to Tomaž Lovrenčič, the director of ITF. Uh, dear Madam President of the Republic, uh, dear President and members of Board of Advisors of ITF, Excellencies, dear friends. Spoštovana gospa predsednica Republike, spoštovani gospod predsednik in vsi člani odbora svetovalcev ITF, spoštovane Excellence, dragi prijatelji. Allow me to say how humbled we are by your kind words, Madam President and Ambassador Ham on this special day when we are marking the 25th anniversary of ITF. Dovolite mi, da povem, kako zelo občutimo ponižno stop vaših prijaznih besedah, spoštovana gospa predsednica in gospod vele poslanik Ham, na ta prav poseben dan, ko obeležujemo 25. obletnico delovanja ITF. ITF was never supposed to last so long. The original idea of helping with humanitarian demining in Bosnia and Herzegovina was supposed to be completed in a few years. And the reason of existence, so we hoped, would cease to exist. Delovanje ITF-a ni bilo nikoli predvideno, da bi trajalo tako dolgo. Prvotna zamisel o pomoči pri humanitarnem razminiranju v Bosni in Hercegovini naj bi se zaključila v nekaj letih, s tem pa naj bi tudi prenehali obstajati razlogi za obstoj ITF-a. Tako smo upali. The initial plan turned out to be over-optimistic and somehow detached from the reality in the world. The requirements for humanitarian action, be it in humanitarian demining, mine victim assistance, in conventional weapons destruction, in help to women and children affected by war, did not decrease. On the contrary, the needs for humanitarian action regionally and globally grew over these 25 years, very fast, sometimes exponentially, and ITF was here to stay. Ta prvotni načrt se je izkazal za preveč optimističnega in tudi nekako odtrganega od resničnosti v svetu. Potrebe po humanitarnemu ukrepanju, torej so se povečevale, tako humanitarno razminiranje, pomoč ženskam in otrokom in nasprotno, torej so se v 25 letih, torej so se te potrebe občasih zelo izredno in nesorazmerno povečevale. In ITF je bil tukaj in je tukaj, da ostane. Because of these urgent needs, ITF transformed itself from a regional, when intentioned, but small player to a true global humanitarian force, an actor with programs in 19 countries. Today, as I speak to you, we implement humanitarian programs from Kyrgyzstan to Libya, from Iraq to Ukraine. Zaradi teh nunih potreb se je ETF iz regionalnega, dobronomernega, vsekakor majhnega akterja preoblikoval v pravo globalno humanitarno silo, ki danes izvaja programe v 19 državah. In tukaj izvajamo programe od Kirgizije do Libije, od Iraka do Ukrajine. We have helped defuse and destroy 347,000 landmines cleared 191 million square meters of land, destroyed 7,600,000 pieces of ammunition, provided prosthetics for 1,599 people, helped 32,000 people with psychosocial therapy programs, and helped hundreds of thousands to go through our advocacy programs. Pomagali smo dezaktivirati in uničiti 347 tisoč kopenskih min, očistili 191 milijonov kvadratnih metrov zemlje, uničili 7,6 milijona kosov streljiva, zagotovili proteze za 1599 oseb in pomagali 32 tisočim ljudem s programi psihosocialne pomoči in pa tudi pomagali 200 tisoč ljudem s programi zagovorništva. 
we operate in most dangerous environments. My colleagues just returned from, for example, Kabul, Afghanistan, or from al Hasaka in formerly ISIS-controlled territory in northeast Syria. ITF staff present with us today operate in Kazakhstan, in Gaza and the West Bank, in Lebanon, of course in Ukraine, in Georgia, in Azerbaijan, in Armenia, all across Southeastern Europe. And I think they are making a difference, a huge difference. Mi delujemo v najnevarnejših okoljih, torej moji kolegi so se pravkar vrnili iz Kabula v Afganistanu iz tudi Ala Hasake, nekdanjega ozemlja, ki je pod nadzorom ISIS-a bil na severovstvodu Sirije. Osebje tudi ITF-a, ki je danes prizotno z nami, tudi deluje v Kazahstanu, v Gazi, na zahodnem bregu, v Libanonu, seveda pa tudi v Ukrajini, Gruziji, Azerbajdžanu in Armeniji, pa vsej jugosodni Evropi. In mislim, da je njihov prispevek vsekako zelo pomemben. I saw firsthand several of them. In the hills above Sarajevo, I witnessed the gratefulness of families and communities after the minefield next to their homes were cleared. In northern Iraq, in Soran, I met with women receiving humanitarian aid after their husbands, deminers, perished during their dangerous work. In Kabul, at the Afghanistan Mine Action Authority compound, I observed women employees bringing their children to work in a clandestine manner so they could gain employment and personal dignity. Nekaj teh tudi primerov sem videl na lastne oči. V hribih nad Sarajevom sem bil priča o hvaležnosti družin in skupnosti, potem ko je bilo minsko polje ob njihovih domovih odstranjeno. Na severu Iraka v Soranu sem se srečal že z ženskami, ki so prejele humanitarno pomoč, potem ko so njihovi možje, demineri umrli med njihovim nevarnim delom. V Kabulu, v kompleksu afganistanskega organa za protiminsko delovanje, sem pa opazoval zaposlene ženske, ki so nas skriva in pripeljale svoje otroke na delo, da bi si zagotovile zaposlitev in osebno dostojanstvo. In Balikči in in Oš in Kirgistan, I enjoyed watching physical destruction of dangerous obsolete munitions and weapons, helping the country avoid catastrophic unplanned explosions of munition sites like the one in Beirut, Lebanon, three years ago. Tudi v Baličju in Nošju v Kirgizistanu sem z veseljem opazoval fizično uničevanje nevarnega, zastarelega streljiva in orožja, kar državi pomaga, da se izogne katastrofalnim nenačetovanim eksplozijem skladišč streljiva, kot je bilo tisto v Bejrutu, v Libanonu pred tremi leti. But there were also difficult moments. Meeting any nervous parent, whose children had to go to school close to a minefield, Wondering what if they walk into the danger zone was always deeply troubling. Bilo pa, bili pa tudi težki trenutki, recimo srečanje za skrbenimi starši, katerih otroci so morali hoditi v šolo blizu Minskega polja in so se spraševali, kaj bo, če bo dostopili na nevarno to območje, ki je bilo še vedno zelo zaskrbljujoče. We're talking to women, for example from Syria or from Afghanistan, who are harassed at any checkpoint, as they were going for their daily obligations or school classes, being negated the very basic right of personal freedom and personal choice, like, for example, getting educated. Recimo tudi pogovor za ženskami, na primer iz Sirije ali Afganistana, ki so jih nadlegovali na vseh kontrolnih točkah, ko so se odpravljali po svojih vsakodnevnih opravkih ali k pouku v šoli, saj so jim recimo tudi kretili osnovno pravico do osebne svobode, ali do osebne izbire, kot je na primer izobraževanje. Or sitting at a meeting with players of sitting volleyball club in Bosnia, where at the meeting I was the only person around the table with both legs. Ali pa sedenje na sestanku z igravci kljuba sedeče od bojke v Bosni, kjer sem bil edini za mizo z obema nogama or listening to children from Ukraine at our psychosocial therapeutical workshops in Debilia Tich on the Slovenian coast, who were so impacted by the war around them that they got used to the fact that they cannot sleep without waking up from nightmares of their terrible ordeal. Uh, ali pa poslušanje otroki iz Ukrajine na naših psihosocialnih terapeutskih delavnicah na Debele Mrtiču, tukaj ob slovenski obali, ki jih je vojna okoli njih tako prizadela, 
da so se otroci navadili na to, da ne morejo spati, ne da bi se zbudili iz nočnih mor o svoji strašni preizkušnji. In all this chaos, in all this circle of vicious violence against civilians, in all this explosion of injustice, ITF employees managed to offer a little spark of hope, a minimum presence of dignity and humanity, a kind word or a smile. V vseh tem kaosu, vseh tem krogu tega groznega nevarnosti so tudi lahko naši zaposleni ITF-a ponudili majhno iskrico upanja, majhno prisotnost dostojanstva in človečnosti, tudi prijazno besedo ali nasmeh. My colleagues who are assembled here and those who work for ITF offices in Biškek, in Erbil, in Hasaka, in Tripoli, in Tunis, in Sarajevo, did a tremendous job. In difficult, sometimes extremely dangerous situations, basically on their own or with minimum support, using their personal conviction that when faced with war, with conflict, with injustice, with suffering, we cannot look the other way, and in case of su human suffering, we cannot be neutral. We have to act. Moji kolegi, torej, ki so sedaj tukaj zbrani in ki, ki delajo uh, za ETF, tudi recimo v pisarnih v Biškeku, v Erbilo, v ha Hasaki, v Tripilju, v Tunisu, v Sarajevo, vsi so naredili ogromno delo. In sicer v težavnih, včasih izredno nevarnih situacijah, pravzaprav s prepoščani samemu sebi, z minimalno podporo, tudi z osebnim popričanjem, torej, ker so bili soočeni z, tudi z vojno, z konflikti, z nepravičnostjo, z trpljenjem, torej niso mogli in ne moremo gledati v stran. V primeru človeškega trpljenja ne moremo biti neutralni, moramo ukrepati. Those people made sure that your generous support found its way to those on the fringe, those who are neglected, neglected, ignored, forgotten and traumatized. I would like to use this solemn occasion today in this magnificent setting of the presidential palace in witness of my president, to extend my heartfelt gratitude to you, Excellencies, especially to the United States of America, to the European Commission, to Germany, to Austria, to Republic of Korea, to Japan, to Czech Republic, to Serbia, to the Central European Initiative, and in previous years to donors as Turkey, to Spain, to Hungary, to OPEC, to Switzerland, to Canada, to Norway and others. Torej, ti ljudje so poskrbeli, da je vaša velikodušna podpora prišla do tistih, ki so na obrobju, tistih, ki so zapostavljeni, prezrti, pozabljeni in traumatizirani. In dovolite, da izkoristim današnjo slovesno priložnost v tem veličastnem okolju predsedniške palače in v prisotnosti naše predsednice, da se vam vsem iskreno zahvalim, Excelence, še posebej z Družnim državam Amerike, Evropski komisiji, Nemčiji, Avstriji, Republiki Koreji, Japonski, Češki republiki, Srbiji, Sednje Evropski pobudi in pa seveda tudi v prejšnjih retih, še Turčiji, Španiji, Mađarski, OPEKu, Švici, Kanadi, Norveških in tudi drugim. Thank you for your understanding. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your generous donations, for your willingness to confront the most difficult situations with consistency and determination so that we can help those in need and strengthen their personal security, their human security, as our name emphasizes. Dovolite, da se zahvalim vam za razumevanje, za podporo, za velikodušne donacije in pripravljenost, da se dosledno in odločno soočite z najtežjimi razmerami, da bi tako lahko pomagali ljudem v stiski in okrepili njihovo osebno varnost, človeško varnost, kot tudi povdarja naše ime. Dear Madam President, uh, Excellencies, we have done quite a lot, 25 years, a quarter of century is a long time, in many countries, of which we are immensely proud but more work lies ahead of us. It might look overwhelming. Some crises really go beyond our capacity to understand and process. But every long journey starts with a first step. 
and after every catastrophe, help starts with a first handshake and the first embrace. Spoštovana gospod predsednica, spoštovane ekscelence, v številnih državah smo naredili veliko, na kar smo lahko zelo ponosni, vendar nas čaka še veliko dela. Morda je videti preobsežno, nekatere krize res presegajo naše zmožnosti razumevanja in obdelave. To, da vsaka dolga pot se začne s prvim korakom in pomoč po vsaki katastrofi se začne s prvim stiskom roke in prvim objemom. I would like to echo my president's call for you to maintain your humanitarian ideals as a strong basis for your foreign policy, to remain committed to those who have been robbed of their happiness, of their security, of their freedom, to join forces as a coalition of humanity to help those in greatest need. And I can assure you, the rewards for such help will be magnificent. Dovolite, da vas ponovno pozovem, da ohranite svoje humanitarne ideale kot trno podlago za svojo zunanjo politiko, da ostanete zavezani tistim, ki so bili oropani svoje sreče, svoje varnosti in svobode, ter da kot koalicija človeštva združite muči za pomoč tistim, ki jo najbolj potrebujejo. In zagotavljam vam, nagrada za takšno pomoč bo veličastna. Thank you, Madam President. Najlepša hvala, gospa predsednica. Hvala, gospod direktor. Thank you very much, Mr. Director. ITF trenutno izvaja projekte v 19 državah od primarne regije jugovzhodne Evrope do Zakavkazija, bližnjega vzhoda, Afrike in Srednje Amerike. Od leta 2015 ITF deluje tudi v Ukrajini. Samo lani, v letu 2022, je ITF zbral skoraj 18 milijonov dolarjev donacij, rekordno vsoto v zadnjih letih, ki jih je uporabil za več deset velikih in pomembnih projektov širom sveta, da bi omogočili ostrezno vskrbo žrtvam konfliktov in vrnili občutek varnosti in dostojanstva. The ITF is currently implementing projects in 19 countries, ranging from the primary region of Southeast Europe to South Caucasus, the Middle East, Africa, and Central America. Since 2015, the ITF has also been working in Ukraine. Last year alone, in 2022, the ITF raised nearly $18 million in donations, a record amount in recent years, which it has used for dozens of large and important projects around the world to provide adequate care to victims of conflict, restoring their sense of security and dignity. O tem danes pričajo ob tej priložnosti tudi razstavljene fotografije. Ljudno vas vabim, ko gledo razstave, ki izkazuje poslanstvo, tako zelo pomembno v današnjem času, krepitev človekove varnosti, sočutja, solidarnosti in partnerstva. Vsem skupaj želimo še naprej uspešno delo, prijetno druženje, obrastavi in lep dan. The photographs on display today bear, bear witness to this. I cordially invite you to visit this exhibition, which demonstrates a mission that is so important in our times, strengthening human security, compassion, solidarity and partnership. We wish you all a continued success in your work Enjoy the exhibition and have a great day. Thank you. But basically, the food we can just complement if we are helpful to the consumers. This is Violeta, right from Albania. She's a mine and uh, was working as a de miner. Somewhere we can go <laughs> together and, and, and see what these guys are doing.